What's going on guys? Gios now right here. So in today's video we're going to discuss about some important things that were going on lately on the KPP bypass research for jailbreaking. Now this is very important for the jailbreak itself and it's a pretty interesting breakthrough coming from Zerob. He managed to create a KPP-less branch of the extra recipe. So let's get into that. Now I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the extra recipe in here. So um, Xerob has posted two days ago, quote, extra recipe got a KPP less branch. And a lot of people were, you know, curious what that is. So they asked what that is. And he said, quote, it means KPP or KTRR or whatever can suck it as long as I have kernel read and write primitives. So in this case, what it pretty much means is that as long as he has read and write primitives, he can patch whatever he wants on the kernel or on the kernel extensions and stuff like that without even dealing with KPP in the first place. Now, KPP has been a huge problem for quite a while for the jailbreakers. And um, it started on iOS 9 and it's only available for the 64-bit devices, so no 32-bit devices. And probably that's the reason we see a lot of jailbreaks for 32-bit lately, because there is no KPP to screw you over in there. And uh, the first one to bypass this KPP thing was the Pango team. Now, uh, normally you need to bypass the KPP because if you don't, you will not be able to apply any kernel patches or any uh, kernel extension patches required for the jailbreak because the kernel will be panicked. KPP will panic and will reboot your device. And of course you did nothing. So before you can do all these modifications, you must make sure that KPP is bypassed, which is a pretty, pretty hard work. As you can probably remember from Yalu, which was the uh, first iOS 10.x jailbreak to include a KPP bypass in it. Now the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus have something else that is called KTRR. It used to be called AMCC in the past, but that's not the correct name of it. Uh, then it was called SIDP, which is also not the correct name, and we figure out that the correct name is KTRR. So uh, this is a little bit different than the KPP. In fact, it's completely different aside of the fact that it protects the kernel because this one is hardware based. The KPP, of course, runs in the exception level three, so you can't really do much about it uh, outside of the fact of, you know, bypassing it. You can simply turn it off and stuff like that. So you have to work your way around it. And that's what uh, Xerob has done. He made a uh, branch of the extra recipe that contains a patch finder that simply avoids the KPP completely. It doesn't mess with KPP, which is something very important for the jailbreaks in the future. Because, you know, uh, this KPP thing, as I said, made jailbreaking quite hard because um, once you got a KPP bypass that actually works, you probably wouldn't like to burn it into the public. So uh, yeah, that's probably one of the reasons 64-bit jailbreaks are increasingly rare lately due to this KPP and due to the KTRR, which pose a serious threat for the jailbreak as they are hard to bypass. And uh, prior to Apple releasing the XNU search for the iOS, we did not know too much about the KPP. We did not even know the correct name of the um, of the KTRR. So, so that's an important breakthrough. So yeah, this is very important for the uh, jailbreaks as it shows the fact that is indeed possible to apply your own patches to the kernel without even screwing up with KPP, which is something good as it might be used in the future jailbreaks. Now. Um, uh, speaking about the jailbreaks, uh, the reason Saigon is giving you some errors, according to Saigusa, which is a developer in the jailbreak community, is that the Ziva exploit itself has some issues, and that's the reason the IOKit connections are failing. So please bear in mind that it doesn't currently work properly, so you should probably wait for a much more stable version or for it to be fixed. And yes, I'm talking about the Saigon jailbreak for iOS 10.2.1. Now, the extra recipe itself uh, created by Xerob works for iOS 10.2 and iOS 10.1.1 and iOS 10.0.2 and 10.0.1 on select devices. Now, although it works on these um, now outdated firmwares, it's very important because it's the first one that includes a patch finder that works around the KPP. 
MVP thing. So uh, it might be very interesting for developers in the future and they might be able to use the concept later on in future jailbreaks. So yes, definitely something interesting. By the way, do not forget to subscribe to stay updated with notifications on to catch the news. I'm Geosnow. Until the next time, peace out.